Come on. Oh, there's a go live button. Screw you, YouTube. Okay. From the button, clearly labeled go live. Um, hello, welcome. Let's start over, shall we? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so I've been talking to myself for a little bit. Uh, it seems like my microphone is coming in a little bit hot. Is that just me? All right. Mm, there, I think I tuned the microphone so it's not too harsh. There somewhere. Oh, that looks okay. All right. No, that's too much. It's, this microphone doesn't usually do this, but my Linux has been on the fritz. So let me know if the audio is okay. I don't want it peaking and blowing into bad audio. All right. Mm, that worries me. It goes in the red. Let me know if it's weird and I'll I'll tune it. Well, for now they're saying I'm okay. Hello, Need Sleep, McBool, Marcel. Uh, happy to have you on board. Now, <laughs> I generated a nurse project uh, while no one was watching because I wasn't live enough yet. This is what happens when you change things. I was using a scheduled event and now everything screwed up. All right, but I haven't changed changed anything yet. I was just looking at trying to remember how you're supposed to configure Wi-Fi because I don't remember. Nerves pack documentation might happen. Yeah. <clears throat> No Wi-Fi wizard, thank you. Installation, da 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 da. cover some of the early distribution stuff but <clears throat> what I need is just the configuration options for setting up Wi-Fi right now so give me that give it to me give it to me there it's So, hey Isaac, welcome aboard. So what we're going to be trying to do today is to have this and one of these talk to each other over our length distribution. Um, we can get into some of the details later, but first we have some due diligence and just basics to set up, which is flashing new firmware to these devices making sure we can push new firmware to them. So, we should start there. So we can see here, this is what the ethernet config would look like while this is, would be what I shoved into The Wi-Fi setup to get that working. So key management, yes, okay. And mode infrastructure. I don't know what that means. I'm gonna ignore it. Um, I've already exposed my SSIDs and stuff on this on the previous stream, so I'm not particularly worried as I mentioned at that time. Um, this is for my tiny little office. And there's like if people go out here just to abuse my Wi-Fi, they, they're very ambitious. That's a simple 
with a little bit of luck, this would be everything we need to connect. So, next target, make sure we have the depths for an RP0, fix whatever I broke, 968. I didn't catch that unexpected token. Square bracket. Oh, right. Weird, weird wrap there. Let's do this. Yeah, I don't remember if I actually need to set the mode. Guess we'll find out. Setting if they're demoing with infrastructure, that's probably fine to use. So just, just try that. Like, I think nerves, like the vintage not GitHub. I feel like that probably covers it quite well. <clears throat> Vintage net Wi Wi Fi. That's a very different key. I wonder if it matters. All right, but that's apparently what it requires of me. Cool. Let's do that. <clears throat> Let's compile some depths. Create firmware. Oh, it's not a command, but that one is. Um, let's see, nerve system is not set. Oh, uh, export next target equal I think I might have to do that. No? This variable is usually set for you by nerves when you specify an X target. No. R pi zero, that's that's important. Letters. Gotta use the right ones. Okay, so now we're burning ourselves uh thing and then it failed mm. <clears throat> okay uh, I should probably specify which elixir version I'm using and which airline using first I'm using let's do elixir one dot file two dash p twenty four and twenty four dot o dot I'm gonna go with two because I'm not sure if we have 24.0.5 yet for nerves. Not that it probably breaks anything, but hey Ashtosh. So we'll we'll start with this inky one. I will probably not be doing anything to this place, so they will probably be showing the very same thing constantly. So now I'm plugging this into the computer and working this all on so I can, I should be able to burn it. And next one we're going to burn. Mm. 
No, let's not do that, because it might be finding, it didn't seem like this found the card, um, and I don't want it to burn to my, <laughs> I don't want it to burn across the help files for my audio interface, that would be unfortunate. Okay, now it's started a bunch of folders, so now it's definitely detected it. Let's say, let's usually slash dev slash sdc. No? I'll probably add that after. Or I just let mix firmware burn prompt me. So now it's doing things and now 1.8 gig. All right, some kind of wallet here that I never actually use. My system decided to be partially KDE at some point. That was unfortunate. I was trying KDE to, to be fair, but yeah, didn't have to get mixed in with all the other stuff I figured. All right, so now we have one card burn, which should Ideally, I mean that we can plug this in. Yeah, let's try doing this so it's visible on camera. So it blinked, so it's getting power. Ideally, this should mean that it shows up. on the network in a little bit. It's blinking, so... I think the Pi Zero is set to the LED to run on heartbeat mode, which means that it doesn't indicate any particular activity other than uh, it's alive. Okay, so it's up. Great, great news. Um, now, since we want to start two of these devices, so MDNS. We can find this via nerves.local due to MDNS. And that's very neat. We're gonna need to be doing this. Uh, like we wanna, we wanna do something cool with this. And we want multiple hosts. So this, we set this host name. And now I would like to make that configurable. So. Um, um, uh, well, it's called a host name. So every time I forget, which will probably be plenty of times. Now, so if we want, now we can set a hostname for that one. So if we want, we can call that something else when we burn it. We can also start setting up the Pi 4 so we have both of them running. Let's start with that. Ooh. System by get get end. That's my bad.
Alright. What was name not set? You're not wrong. Uh, let's call this one brains just to match up with nerves in some delightful way. So now we have that. So let's pop the card out of this thing. Same kind of card, a bit larger, uh, capacity wise. Like that in. And burn. And yes, please don't burn it to my audio interface. Let me know if you have any questions while we're going. Uh, I don't know everything that we will be doing. Um, so right now we're at the stage of just making sure we have both of these on the Wi-Fi, which would mean we can push new firmware at them quite easily. And we, ideally, if what I'm doing right now works, we should be able to access them via two different host names, which helps. Here comes the power. The power LED is blinking, but it's on the wrong side. There's the power LED. All right. Let's see. Brains the local. Seems like it's up. It's up. Perfect. That worked way better than I feel like it should. <clears throat> now, if we want to do Erlang distribution, there might be a little bit more we need to do. For one thing, so MDNS Lite, let's see, Nerves Pack does some of what we want for us, I think. So if we look here, Nerves Pack does not start our Erlang distribution. Distribution is not hard to enable, but it requires some thought on node naming and security. Erlang distribution requires that the hostname part of the device's node name be reachable from the computer that's trying to connect. Um, and connect to some limitations to MDNS names. Oh. Okay, so these actually do already advertise two different names. Let's see if we can find out what names this one is advertising. I wonder if how we find out what the other name is. We could probably do run something local for discovering it, but since we've set up separate names, that's probably fine to just roll with it. Okay, I'm gonna gonna have to split this further. No, I think we'll do vertical. Export, no. Um, the next target for this one is rpy0 and host name is nerves. And for this one,
And this one is called brains. <clears throat> so, I mean, we can try if there's nothing more we need to do than just do these things. System, start that. Node start, node set cookie. Yeah, we'll try. But I think there might be more to it just to get uh, all of the working all pie to pie, so to speak. Um, System. Oh, <laughs> I haven't logged into the device. Now, as always, free to answer and free to ask any questions. I will happily try to answer them. So this will be the user will. Be Nerves, I'm assuming. I'm guessing I'm logged in as nerves. Not brain so vocal. And then we set the secret cookie, which is very secret. Let's go with cookie. So the secret cookie is a secret that both of the nodes in the cluster share, which is what protects them from other parties uh, playing in their pond. It's the shared secret. So now we start with that nerd. So now, <clears throat> okay, I'm curious about this one. Oh, that's the that's the uh, specific one from uh, serial num number. Yeah, this would have worked, <laughs> but now we have one called brains.local, which makes me happy. That's also good. So this would mean connecting blah 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 blah. That's not really what I want to do. Now, hmm. I think we should just be able to try to call node join. But Erlang distribution is not something I've dealt with a lot, so I may be very wrong there. Yeah, sure, let's go with this one. Yeah, yeah, you start them with a name and setting a cookie and then... Huh, you have... Net admin king is what we should be able to do. All oh, right, the uh, lecture node module would probably be easier. Yeah. Thank you, Isaac. So let's start with this. Um, yeah. So now it's not connected. I'm getting some very nice assist from Isaac in the chat here. So this is just a node atom. It went false. <laughs> so I guess that's a bad sign. Now, that's not entirely un unexpected. So in a fairly recent release, they added the 
feature which I'm leaning on here I'm going to lean on where uh, you uh, they added a DNS bridge for Erlang's DNS resolver which will enable Erlang distribution in GenTCP users to be passed dot local host names otherwise that doesn't work and I haven't specifically configured the bridge so that's probably what we need to do so they can resolve each other so let's hop out of one of these and go to the config and here's the config for MDNS like <clears throat> here's a bunch of stuff things all the great stuff so DNS bridge enabled true DNS bridge IP 127 0, 0, 0, 53. So that's an arbitrary local internal IP. Fifty-three in yes, bridge recursive. And then vintage net. doesn't have additional DNS servers set up, so let's do that. Additional name servers. 127.0.0.53. Oh yeah, I should be able to just uh, use the IP addresses directly. That's a good backup to have. But the fun thing is, if you can do this, you can actually just use MDNS uh, and check, like, eh, what can we detect? And then you can try to connect them all in a cluster ad hoc as nurse devices come online. It's probably stupid to do, but it could be fun, which is typically why I do things. Okay, these should be exported already. So we can build a new firmware with that config we're going to need to do this for both of the devices so i might as well exit this okay so for the pi 4 mix firmware.gen.script and then check that script a little bit It does a bunch of stuff. And the point is that I can do that. Now I'm flashing a new firmware. And I should be able to do this. Hey Isaac, like, have you done any nerves? I know you've like <laughs> Uh, I know you've done a bunch of in-depth stuff in, in different parts of uh, Elixir, so I'm not surprised that you know uh, sort of node connections by heart, but um, I don't know if you've ever really gone into nerves. Ziggler on ours, that makes sense. Uh, debugging MDNS light. So, this could be a good thing to look at. Dump records. <laughs> like, I want to scroll up, but I think Gmux scrolling up is annoying. Um, yeah, it's seeing brings the local, it 
It's not seeing nerves the local right now, and that might be because nerves the local is down. Um, because it's still restarting, probably. Mm, might be coming back up now. So this one has. This is seeing north of local, but this is north of local, so that's not all that impressive. Okay. So with a little bit of luck, the early distribution stuff should just work now. Not sure that's going to be the case, but we'll see. So this is a straight copy case. Oh. This can actually resolve nerves at nerves that local. Slight delay and then it happened. This is nice. So this one knows about that one. Does this one know about its buddy? Yes, now they know about each other. The, the zig cross completion stuff seems really good. I've just heard about it and it's not really my area. But it, if I was trying to learn C these days, I would definitely take a look at zig. I do want to learn Z, C at some point, but I just can't. <laughs> I can't motivate it. It's, I don't need it for anything yet. So, um, I'm still curious if I can get those records. Wait, is it maybe the dump caches? No. So, because uh, the cool thing about MDNS is that there's sort of auto discovery, so we should. In theory, I don't know if MDNS like covers that, but we should be able to just discover new devices, which is sort of what I would would have wanted. Okay, but um, let's see. I guess uh, there's a bunch of things we can do with the node module. We can grab just n this node.list. So now we have this node here. And we can tell that node to spawn and run an iota.puts. No? Oh, node.spawn. I wonder if we have to ring logger that next. Oh, wait. I would have expected the woo to come out on the other node, but... 
Erlang's secret DNS module? That's... Does Erlang have a secret DNS module? I thought it had a DNS module, but I haven't actually tried. Um. Now, so what I would want is not necessarily to check. Uh, I would want to see the self-discovery thing. Um, um. Not sure what to do there. Inets as DNS. <laughs> Returns the PID of a new process start by the application of fun on node if node does not. So I I think uh, it's actually doing something a little bit too smart here, where I'm getting the output when I don't want it. Hmm. What's the best thing to do for, hold on, self? So that's my PID here. Can I reconstruct a PID like this? I don't think I can, right? No, what? Oh, that's, no, that's just a comment. That's no good. Uh, let's see. <laughs> yeah, Erlang distribution forwards to group leader. So IO puts will not help me. I just want to prove that we are running code on the other one. Uh, which I guess... To spawn inside the node spawn. Would that actually help? Wouldn't that also go to group leader? That's fine. It, it knows who its group leader is. Um, yeah, <laughs> now I have them connected, and uh, yeah, creating a module is a... You think that will work? Now we've defined that one there, so we've defined that module. If we try to do foo.bar here, it does nothing. But hopefully, we will do foo.bar there. Evidence <laughs> that we are talking to the other module. <laughs> but it does still talk via group leader because it consistently gets you your output, which is nice, actually, but maybe a bit inconvenient for this case. Okay, so these two devices are definitely talking to each other. I would, like, depending on how far we get, I would have liked to set up a small module for for doing this whole uh, setting up the, the node and the connecting dials but that assumes that I can do um, that I can do some of this uh, fun stuff with uh, with actually discovering the MDNS things so because I've done dump records and that didn't tell me much. And at this point I've already told them told it to look for a particular address. But if you use uh, if you've used a Mac, they use tons of this stuff with um, auto discovering things in the network. 
and bonjour, uh, which is usually Avahi on. I think it's Avahi. Uh, yeah, two terminals talking to each other over Wi Fi. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm glad it's exciting, uh, Isaac. But yeah, the MDNS being able to do this via MDNS and uh, dot local addresses seems like it. it's pretty damn good. I'm just curious if I can wrangle it to tell me what it knows because it does know things. I'm pretty sure. Mm. But yeah, these are now these are now thoroughly connected. Now, do I have another micro USB? Because we could add a third node via this one. If I just had enough micro USBs <laughs> lying around, <laughs> which I uh, impressively don't, because I mostly transition to USB C. Thankfully, I could pull the power from this camera. Actually, I think that's still micro USB. Hold on. My setup here is the jankiest of jank to make sure that we have this camera and we have that camera. The nice thing about that camera is it already has a big fat battery. So MDNS is just for advertising its own. Yeah, so, but I guess the thing is that they advertise. So I should be able to pick up that advertisement right because if we can resolve them that's because we're using the that advertisement to find the way to the node right there I, I don't see how it could work unless I could get that information <laughs> So now we have power for one more. So I'm just going to grab that once SD card. Because I think it would come up as uh, nervous.local, which I don't want. Go ahead and plug in. Because we need thinner terminals. <laughs> That's what we need. Uh, like, uh, export makes target equals Wi-Fi zero. Export host name equals foot. Yeah, your foot. I feel like there should be functionality to just get hosts, set hosts, set the list of host names, no, but in this, so the DNS bridge I feel like is doing some of that or is it, maybe it's the core monitor, I have no idea what actual part is responsible for this. And I was expecting this or this to be able... This is dump the records that MDNS Lite advertises. Dump the constant of the responder MDNS caches. Yeah, maybe those. But I don't think I saw it last time I tried it. So, dump caches. Actually, now it's picked up that there's a MacBook Pro companion link, TCP local, something, something. Uh, 
actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the that's the connection. Uh, so that one has a connection to a MacBook Pro, actually just for power, but I plugged it by by habit. I plugged it into the one that also connects it as a USB gadget. So hmm. it essentially accidentally has a USB gadget mode. Well, let's burn that one. I sort of remembered it and understand. So that one's burned. I have it. That should be coming up in a little bit. So, one thing that I like about this is that it provides the potential for shoving Raspberry Pis in different corners of my office and then having them cluster up and uh, as long as I provide Wi-Fi and power, they can do their merry thing in different parts uh, of my place. And they can all work together. And I can make a little cluster of them and have it do weird things. Ah, uh, that's up. So... Start the uh, EPMD. Oh, let's do that one. I already know that star. And no, uh, that's a cookie. Same cookie as everyone else. And uh, let's see. Connect to the brains. Then note a list. And it gotta connect it got the rest of them. <laughs> Figure out net mesh networking, yeah, I guess. Don't know if Vintage Net provides that or not. I think people have experimented with it, but I don't know if it does that by default. I don't think so. Now, the, what I would want to do for for more independent devices is to put sort of low power sensors with just running off a of battery for months and have them talk over radio to to a more central Raspberry Pi or something that can talk to cloud cloud services or whatever wherever I want to shove the data. That's something I want. I've been wanting to build and should pick back up because I have all of the hardware. I should just uh, try to wrangle Connor Rigby to help me out with some of the radio code because there's there's a cool library for doing RFM69 I think it's called. Don't think that's the one. No. It might be fine. I haven't tried it. Um, it be... No, he's done one. Come on. find his github. I think he has a few though, so it's, it's always a challenge. So 
If I search for RF, okay, RF69, not RFM69. Uh, yeah, so this is one of my challenges for doing that project. He's not necessarily supporting my frequency. It might work, as, or as he told me, it, it might work fine. It might not. Uh, and I'm not capable enough of this stuff to, to figure it um, I'm not good enough at this to figure out if, if it's a problem or not. RTL SDR hat. What's Isaac coming with information here? That's a lot of it's a lot of information in a name. Hmm. So I have these things from Low Power Labs, Motino. I have a number of these lying around. And you, I've ordered them with some, I don't think I have exactly this model, but it comes with one of these variants. So um, pre-installed radio modules, yeah, so something like this and shove an antenna just a piece of copper string uh, antenna on that and i think i had was it spark fun or i think it was an adafruit rfm69 for the pi no not, there wasn't any oled to it Yeah, something like that. It wasn't exactly this one, but a small breakout for, for just hooking it up. Yeah, it was more like this. So I have this lying around, so that will give a Raspberry Pi the poten the capacity to do radio. Um, and that just means I can send messages within sort of, uh, up to 500 meters, I think, is I the, under ideal circumstances, so a lot less, typically. But yeah, that will allow me to have sort of a core, core Raspberry Pi and uh, a ton of low power sensor machines out there. So I have a, so, a small solar panel and a rechargeable Lion battery, a LiPo battery, I never remember which one, and a few a few things like that so I could shove them into a weatherproof box and put them out in the garden. Uh, yeah, I think this is fixed frequency, so 433 MHz. That sounds like a frequency to me and yeah. So that's some of what I, <laughs> some of the actual hardware projects I really want to do. Uh, they're a bit involved. So I'm not sure how to best cover them on, a, on shorter streams. But this, this is a good start for just like very conveniently-ish, like very convenient for computer clustering, just setting up um, an Erlang cluster and being able to talk amongst yourselves with, uh, with these computers. Or if you want to try to do some kind of hive mindy thing where you put wheels on a bunch of Raspberry Pis and they talk to each other and try to coordinate. Uh, that would also be fun to do over clustering. Oh, the SDR in RTL SDR, so it's software defined radio. Yeah, that's that stuff's cool. Uh, I haven't dug into it at all. But, but being able to do radio based on software is neat. Okay, so this has been a bit in-depth and nerdy in the sense that we've been staring at a terminal and it hasn't, we haven't had any blinky lights or anything like that. Or, I mean, the, the lights are blinking, they're just not very interesting. But I don't think we necessarily need to 
push it further. I guess one one question is: Do, do people know how much you can actually do with with Erlang distribution? Like what that allows you to do. So what we did, I believe it was on this node, was to tell it to run code on another node and then we get the return. That's pretty neat actually. <laughs> that, that's a powerful thing to do. Um, or we get the output at least. And I mean if we do it equal self. Yeah, so this and we do um stuff module do do def uh, message comma do send Message takes a PID, comma do, and it should send to that PID the message to PID. So yeah. that's a module now. So if we have this PID here, which we do. We should be able to just say uh, capture the node list here. So we want the second one. So that's the one. So send this to N2. We want to call food that message like that and if we flush which is look at our message box message mailbox our mailbox we get the message so you can do message passing trivial trivially across the cluster you can also tell other nodes to run functions for you which uh, gives gives a lot of interesting possibilities. Um, yeah, so that's just getting started with the Erlang distribution on NERS. It's uh, actually ludicrously simple. The thing I still want to figure out, still really curious, and I will probably bother the NERS guys about this. I actually did bother some of them a little bit before this. But I'm not sure I got the answer I needed. You can also get the caches of the DNS records. Uh, dump caches, dump records, depending on what you mean by host. Yeah, I don't think that that's the answer to what I want to do. Because I might, I might be making a poor assumption here, but I'm assuming that MDNS Lite to be able to route correctly, it receives the information about what dot local hosts are actually out there. So it would have essentially a list of those. Um, and in that way, we could, I would expect us to be able to get all devices on that are advertising on their dot local addresses. The table of records that it advertises blah 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 some address set up and fill in. The cache is filled record that it sees advertised. Okay. That's what I would have expected and that's what I want. Give me that dump Caches. Oh, and DNS light. It might be that I mistook the output of this to be part of record. No, it's seeing, it's seeing my MacBook announce itself. That's what it's seeing. 
it's successfully connected to those hosts, so I mean, it knows about them. But it's just seeing the advertisement for... I find that weird. I find that strange. Uh, I will probably bother the nurse guys about this a little bit. Figure out what, what could be done. So, there are a bunch of cool solutions for sort of building up your Erlang cluster ad hoc, like uh, what is a lib cluster and horde and swarm and things. Yeah, exactly. You can make it difficult to maintain service mesh. <laughs> that's, that's what Erlang distribution is for, after all. Um, yeah, so I'm a little bit surprised that uh, this didn't give me more information. But yeah, I think that's where we'll wrap up. We have not one, not two, but three Nerves devices all hooked up to one another. And that's a little bit neat. And I look forward to receiving some of the additional hardware I've ordered for this one, or for, for the Pi's overall, but some monitors and stuff that should let us do assorted fun things and maybe try the new versions of scenic which is UI UI framework so uh, I think we'll wrap up there um, sorry about the early on uh, kerfuffle with uh, going live and not actually being live when I thought I was live but I'll, I'll figure out this scheduled YouTubing at some point no uh, have a great weekend.